Hi everyone and welcome back to NTE. In today's video we're going to look at how to work with a parabola right, that has a restricted domain. Right? So this is a very key area that we look at when we are um, in the topic of inverse functions. Right? We know that the problem that we come across is that um, the parabola is actually a relation so we need to restrict its domain right in order to plot it as a function right so there's two different cases that can occur right um, it's either they can ask you to restrict the domain or they can give you the restricted domain right so in these examples this is the second example uh, we are looking at the case where the domain is restricted for you okay so in the previous example, we looked at this exact function, right, g of x, right, but now the difference is that um, the a value is negative, right. So while we were looking at an upward-facing parabola in the previous example, now we're looking at a downward-facing parabola. Okay, so we still have the same um, restriction, right, x values less than or equal to zero, right, so when we look at a basic sketch of a downward facing parabola it means that we are not looking at this arm of the parabola okay but rather we're looking at this left hand side arm of the parabola right that's going to cover the domain of x values less than or equal to zero right so now let's just think of the domain and the range of this full parabola right so the domain is going to be exactly as stated over here x values less than or equal to zero right and its range there yeah, we can see it's just from this basic sketch it's going to be y values less than or equal to zero okay so negative y values right so now remember that the domain and range of the original function right um, are going to swap around and become the domain and range of your inverse function Okay, notice the notation that's used over here, g to the minus 1 of x, right, we are able to use this notation because of this restricted domain, because now the inverse function is going to be um, a function, right. So the first question, like before, asks us to determine the equation of g to the minus 1 of x, okay. So we're going to start exactly the same way, right, we're going to say let g of x equal y right so then therefore y is equal to negative 5x squared okay and now we're going to go through the process of swapping x and y around like usual right so that's going to give us that x is equals to minus 5y squared okay and now we need to solve for y from its current position right Doing that, right, we'll have negative 1 over 5, right, because we're dividing both sides by negative 5. We still have this x, and this is equals to y squared. Okay, so now we need to take the square root of both sides. So we'll have the square root of negative 1 over 5, x is equals to y, right. Right, so now most of you will be jumping out on the screen now because you know that when you take um, the even roots of both sides, we need the plus and minus sign, okay? But in this case, because we're working with a restricted domain, right, we have to decide whether are we going to put a plus or a minus here, right? We can't put both, right? And that's all going to come down from the domain, right, of the original function, right? And we look at the domain of the original function because over here we have y equals, right? So this equation over here is going to determine the values of the range of this inverse function, right? So now the range of the inverse function is going to be equal to the domain of the original function, right? So now the domain of the original function says x value is less than or equal to 0, right? So which means that we need to put a minus sign outside over here. Okay, cool. So then this, right, is the equation of g inverse. We can even conclude over here, right, g to the minus 1 of x is going to be equal to negative square root of negative 1 over 5 of x, 
Okay. Now let's go down to B. Right. B says states the domain and range of G inverse. Right. So we already said that the domain right, of G inverse, that's going to be the range of the original function. We just change this variable. Right. So it's now going to be x less than or equal to 0. Right. And the range of G inverse is going to be the domain of the original function. Just change that variable, so y less than or equal to 0. Right. So now let's look at the domain of our inverse function. Right. It's x values less than or equal to 0. In other words, we have negative x values. Right. So when we plug in negative x values in there for x, we'll have a negative times a negative, giving us a positive underneath the square root. So all is good. Right. Going down to question number C. C says sketch in the same set of axes, right, the graph of G and G to the minus 1. Right. So let's just jot down a Cartesian plane for ourselves and we can get going. Right. So to sketch the graph of G, right, we're going to look at its domain and range, right, and also bearing in, um, into account the properties of this parabola, right, we already stated that this is a downward facing parabola because we have a negative a value, right? The a value is also greater than 1, which means that our parabola is going to be quite skinny, right? So it is going to have to be quite close to the negative x axis, right? The domain is x values less than or equal to 0, so negative x values, and the first point is going to be here at 0, right? The range is y values less than or equal to 0, right, which makes sense because we have to draw this parabola over here, right, so that's the graph of G, right. Right, so now let's draw the graph of G uh, to the minus 1, right, the inverse function, okay. So it says it has a domain of x values less than or equal to 0, right? So we're looking at these negative x values, and the first one is going to be right here at 0, right? And then it says uh, y values less than or equal to 0, so it's also below the x-axis, and it should look something like this. Okay, so that's the graph of g to the minus 1, right? And we also know that another characteristic of inverse functions is that those two um, graphs, right, are reflections of each other about the line y is equals to x, right, so we put that in our sketch as well. Okay, so that's it for today's video, Matriculants. I hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.